So Auction House is a brand new documentary which discusses the journey of two brothers, Anwar and Arshad, as they attempt to revive the fortunes of the oldest auction house in India, which was purchased by their grandfather. Indeed, and in a moment we'll be speaking with Anwar and Arshad and also Edward Owls, who directed the story. Here's a sneak preview of the documentary. This is Auction House. Old slide viewer. Very nice old slide viewer. Beautiful. 1,000. 1,000. 1,100. 2,000 rupees last time. The big thing that time, coming to England. Oh my God! People were putting garlands on my neck. Line for 40 years and more. We have seen this sort of print. This is absolutely fake. Absolutely fake. We are in Auction House in Calcutta. I would say we are in the Bond Street of Calcutta. I want to bring my business to the 21st century. And there could be synergies where we could, you know, we could cooperate. So, I'm on the way to the airport now. Yes, coming to Calcutta. We are responsible for over 100, 150 families. Let's all be proud of this place and let us make everybody feel proud of this place. Okay, this is, this is our identity. We have to change. The, I, all those old theories about I'm 50, I'm 60, 70, either you can produce or you can not produce. You are proud and not proud of this article. Why not? Okay? Don't take pride in saying that we can sell soft soap. So That's no. Try to get it inside your pretty head. In India, it's a common opinion that if anybody comes from England or America, he's subjan tawala, means he knows everything. This business will not last for very, very long. It will end. Slowly and steadily, he will understand how things work here in this country. Seven hundred. Seven hundred. Twelve hundred is the last. 1200 only. 1250. Lovely though. Yes, I do indeed. A very intriguing looking story there, which has its European premiere tomorrow in London. And we're going to be giving away tickets shortly on the show to one lucky viewer. That's right. Uh, well, joining us now are the two gentlemen you saw in that trailer, Anwar and Arshad. And we're also joined by the director of the documentary, Edward Owls. Good evening, guys. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, well, well, Fantastic. If I could start with the stars of the show. So if I could start to introduce, first of all, in the middle there, we have Anwar. And we have your brother Arshad there on the outside. Tell me a little bit about when you first found out that your father had this, your grandfather rather, had this auction house. Was it always something that you had an ambition to revive or was it something that happened later in life? Uh, much later in life because when they bought it, it was in 1940. Right. And I was not even born then. <laughs> okay. So basically the, re the revival part came when I planned to go back to India from here, which is about five, six years ago, right. to spend more time there than here. So that's the time. Whilst I've been associated with it for much longer, yeah. but, but actually hands-on approach came about when I went back to India. So quite recently. That, that indeed. Now, uh, Arshad, if I can ask you, and we'll come to Edward in a second, actually, but I wanted to ask you about the story itself, right, which is obviously a very personal story. It's about your family, about your history as well. And sometimes it's quite difficult to take your personal stories and put them out there for everybody to see. So how did you feel about putting the story, uh, your very personal story about your family out when Edward came to you with the proposal? Uh, when, uh, when he came in the big beginning, uh, I found it a bit uh, awkward. Uh -huh. <laughs> Uh, because he used to ask all sort of personal questions yeah. and everything. <laughs> uh, uh, Edward, if I can come to you, what kind of personal questions were these that you were asking? Well, I think that originally I had a slightly different idea for the film, so oh. it was only once I spent a bit of time there that I started to understand more about the brothers' history and the fact that they spent most of their lives uh, living in different countries. Yeah. So I was just interested in... Um, what it meant to now be living under the same roof for the first time in decades and, and you know, how that felt and hopefully as uh, 
the film shows, you know, there's there's degrees of antagonism, but eventually, you know, they start well, to we're get all on. friends here today. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I mean, Edward, if I could ask you, it's not it's not the first subject that would jump out at you as a as a documentary. You'd think about uh, you know an auction house, India going back, but actually, when you start getting into the narrative, it really is very interesting, and the trailer looked fantastic. What was it that grabbed your attention initially about this that made it jump out to you? Well, when I went out to Calcutta to to look for an idea to do a film, I had lots of other things that I researched and visited around the city but as soon as I met these two gentlemen I think that that, that was it I mean it's it's as a filmmaker you're looking for for people with character yeah. who people want to know more about who who have you know interesting layers to, to uncover and who you think you can build a relationship of trust and can collaborate of with course. I mean I think it was really important for me to to work with these guys and hopefully it became more comfortable as we went on um, and I think we all, we, we, it was always very frank about what the film was about and what I was interested in asking about. And I think. Indeed. And what was the process like of putting the film together? This is your first documentary, first is that right? One, yeah. Yeah, yeah, painful and exhausting. Painful and exhausting. <laughs> Sounds like um, most of them, to be honest. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I think just partly being in Kolkata and, and, and the sort of different way that life works over there, sort of sometimes it felt like banging my head against a brick wall. Not necessarily because <laughs> of these two, but other people who I was trying to sort of organise, and then um, just the financial considerations, trying to raise the money to do the edit and that yeah. sort of thing. was. And Anwar, if I can come to you, I mean, surely you couldn't have imagined that somebody was going to make a documentary about this. What, would, what were your thoughts and your feelings when somebody first came to you and said, we're going to make a film about this story, about your family and about, about this auction house? Well, until now, I do not know what's in the film. Oh, really? <laughs> because, because I haven't seen the film. You know some and, of it. And, you, you no, filmed I know it, some of it. Yeah. And when he was they started it. making the film, and from what I can perceive what the film is going to be like, we had no idea it will turn out to be this. Yeah. You know. And, and you're obviously so at the premiere tomorrow, which is tomorrow, is that right? Yeah. The premiere tomorrow of the film? Night. Is that the first time you'll see it from the, start to finish? the first time I shall see it. Wow. And my brother. Is it, are you a little bit yeah. worried about what he might have captured on camera because it's a documentary? It's a fait accompli. Nothing can be done now. Um, if I can ask you one more time, actually, Anbar, right? So, mm. you, for, for the film, you had to come to London again after quite a long time, is that right? Uh, yes. And what was yes. it like coming back to Britain after such a long time? Uh, no, I have been coming. Okay. So, I mean, I come a couple of times a year. Uh -huh. So, I keep in touch with London. Indeed. I can't leave London. I've Indeed. been here 45 years. Of course. So, I can't leave London. But for the film, I came twice. Indeed. Because Ed Ed wanted to film me at the various locations. Yeah, yeah. and I think I think what they're talking about is the one the first time mm -hmm. you'd been back, having gone back to Calcutta to, to sort of revive the auction house. Yeah. that was the longest you'd been away from in, yeah. from England for so from the, forty from, from years. The, from, the, from the London point of view, mm -hmm. still the same, great, vibrant. Expensive, gone very expensive. <laughs> it, has, it is expensive. It's gone very expensive. I mean, we mentioned earlier that the, the two of you effectively grew up in different places. Mm. I mean, yourself, uh, Arshad, you were growing up what, in Calcutta or in India. Yes, I was growing up in Calcutta. In Calcutta. Um, uh, were you surprised when your brother came to you with this idea? I mean, you've, you've mentioned that he wanted to revive it. Uh, I mean, it's, it is difficult, isn't it? Because you've been growing up apart, you've now come back together again, and in such a public way. In such a public way, to uh, in a film that that hopefully many many people are going to see. Were you worried? I don't regret. You don't regret. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, what uh, about the actual process? I mean, in, when when they were actually capturing, when Edward was yeah, and his team were capturing the footage, and the, the, did you guys ever have any clashes that you you, know, you felt a little bit awkward about? Uh, yes, all the time. All the time. <laughs> but, 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 but by the evening, uh -huh. that was it. Very normal. Back to normal again, Back but to by normal the time again. the evening happens. My, my younger brother has, uh, has great regards for me, actually. So end of the day, he lets me do. He puts up his resistance, but end of the day, he lets me do what, uh, what I want to do. Oh, fantastic. Yes. And uh, there's, I understand we've got an image of you, actually, from when you were a lot younger, a lot younger, where uh, you were actually thinking about doing a spot of modelling. Is that correct? I think oh, it was your that was, that, was that yeah, Andrew? Yeah. Was it you? Andrew? Yeah. Oh, here we go. Oh, wow. That's, oh. that's wow. Ladies, uh, eat your heart out. Look at that. That's a magnificent picture. Did you always... Uh, did you see the picture? We had it on the screen there. I don't think you saw it, did you? Yes, I just saw it. Oh, you did saw yeah. it? Did yes. you ever think at that point when that picture was taken that at some point you'd be in a film that was opening at the Open Docs Festival? No, no, not at all. <laughs> no, not at all. No. No, we, we, we are very pleased to have this film. If, I mean, it's our family history. Uh -huh. It's our family history which, uh, which Ed has captured. Indeed. In, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a very vibrant manner, actually. You know, and we are very happy. 
Yeah. Well, it does look great. Now, yeah. Edward, the premiere is tomorrow, yeah. and we're giving away some tickets, aren't we? Yeah, it's uh, the opening night of the Open City Docs Fest, um, and yeah, it should be a really good night, and then it's screening again on Saturday, along with a whole host of other films during the week. Fantastic. Um, so you can check out the programme online, I think. Well, if you'd like to be in with a chance of winning a pair of tickets to tomorrow evening's premiere in London, listen closely to these details. Lovely For a chance to win a pair of tickets to tomorrow evening's European premiere of Auction House in London, answer the following question. What is the name of the auction house in India? A. The Exchange. B. Exchanging Money. C. The Russell Exchange. Send us your answer A, B or C together with your full name and contact number to ltl at islamchannel.tv. Entrance without these details will not be included. One winner will be chosen at random from all correct entries. Competition closes at midnight tonight. Entries made after this will not be counted. For full terms and conditions, visit www.islamchannel.tv. Wow. Well, well, I don't want to spoil the surprise for anyone, but if I can ask you, apart from the film aside, how successful has the venture been in getting the auction house up and getting it running again? Uh, the bottom line has changed positively, positively by leaps and bounds. Fantastic. Fantastic. I mean, that, that, that really is important. Yes, yes. That's, isn't it? that's fantastic. And I mean, does the exchange rate play absolutely any, any factor in that? Uh, no. No, no not Ex at all. Exchange rate is something that goes up and down all the time. All the time. So we, we don't factor that in. That's brilliant. Well, gentlemen, thank you so much for joining thank us. We look very much forward to being able to see the film. And thank best you. of luck tomorrow for the premiere. Thank, thank you. Very much. That'll be fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Now, for the next month or so, many of us are going to be fixated around a round, colourful object. Just 437 grams, the simple sphere can bring joy to millions of households around the world. We're, of course, talking about the football at the heart of the FIFA World Cup. But whilst we'll all be shouting at the commotion surrounding the sphere, there's a family in Pakistan who will play co uh, will pay close attention to the ball itself. Sabir Bhatti brings us a story of a small family-run business where footballs have been in the family for generations. Safdar Sandel has been making footballs for more than 50 years. His company in Pakistan's North East Sialkot has been making them for over a century. This is a local family-run enterprise, but ball making is the town's nucleus and many locals are involved in the business. Just to give you an indication of how important Sialkot is to the sport, listen to this. The city exports an average amount of 40 million footballs every year. This accounts for nearly 70% of the entire global amount of football exports. Sardar says his family's history of manufacturing footballs dates back to his grandfather, who made leather for football producers over a hundred years ago. My, my grandfather was uh, tanning the leather and uh, supplying the leather to the man who was making saddles and the man who also made the football. In 1904, Safdar's father started sewing footballs and hired some locals to help him. Eventually, they formed a small football factory and selling to British troops stationed in the city. Later, when the troops moved to Singapore, the soldiers asked Safdar's father to continue making footballs for them. It was then that the business expanded to Asia. Safdar Sandal set up his own football factory in the 1960s with his elder brother. The brothers consider themselves the third generation of their football-making family. And Safdar says he's extremely proud of how they've turned their city into a hub of football production. The third generation was of travellers in the 60s, 70s and 80s. These people travelled a lot to the remotest corners of the world. These people were the true ambassadors of Sialkot. The official FIFA football this year is also from Sialkot and produced in a factory not far from Safdars. The sophisticated design of the ball, dubbed Bragzuka, has reduced the number of panels on the ball from eight to six to bring about performance improvement. The ball we're all intensely watching should fly with great stability and all this is possible because of the hard work and industry know-how of people like Safdar. The 75-year-old says the family's fourth generation has also grown up and joined the industry and that the youngsters have proven to be even more qualified and savvy when it comes to running the family business. The fourth generation has now come up, like you see my nephew 
and my own son. They are more qualified, more able, they are more savvy to uh, technical and mechanical education and business administration. They have more brains, more intelligent. They have invited world brands. The brazuca, named after a playful slang word for native Brazilians, interwines colours and ribbons, symbolising the traditional multi-coloured wish bracelets worn in the country. And while the design may inherently be Brazilian, the leather and binding remains very much a Pakistani affair.